Hi, I'm Liz Schweyer. Welcome to Green It Yourself. In this episode, I wanted to show you how to build an in-garden worm bed. Now, the reason I want to show you this one particular type is that I reckon it works better than all the other ones. I've tried worm towers and worm feasts, but I reckon this one is best because you've got a lot more real estate. And with more real estate, yes, it takes up a bit more of the garden bed, but it gives more surface area for your worms to get through the food faster and make it into compost faster. So that's the secret. So what do you do? Get your old worm farm, if you've got a square one or just a square box, and drill some holes in it. I'm just gonna wear my magnificent gardening gloves. Ideally, you'll just make lots of little holes through the box. That's for the worms to go in and out of. Make it all around the sides as well. There's already, there may be already some holes in the bottom from your worm farm, but just add a few more. Now, look, they're worms, yes, but they're gonna be your master composters. So it may feel like overkill, but I give these a little file off, just so their little tummies don't scratch. Some may say I'm modelly coddling the worms. Hey no. Just looking after your workers. It's probably a worm union. Now I have to put this into my garden bed. I've got a wicking bed here, which means it's a self-watering bed. It's got about 30 centimetres of depth of soil before you get to the substrate and the water layer. So I want to just dig away a layer to put my wicking worm bed in, pop it in, so it hits flush with the bottom layer, and then fill around it. Because you want all that soil to be touching the holes so that when your worms come and go, they don't have to leap across a void. Worms aren't really that great at the Olympics. Now, that is basically a vacant house for worms. If you put this into a garden bed, which you can, you can put it anywhere, worms will come to the food, but it may take them a while to travel the journey and find it. You can buy worms, you can ask friends if they've got worms, that can get a bit awkward, but you never know your luck. Or you can just put it in a garden bed and you build it and they will come. But for instant, I like to just go and buy some worms. Now, you want first of all to create a beautiful layer. This is sort of the bedding material to make it really great for the worms to live in. It's just a really moisture rich, but not wet medium. I'm gonna use um, something called core. It's a coconut fiber that is really absorbent but also retains moisture. So you can see it here, I've had this block soaking in this bucket of water. You can see that it holds moisture really well, but also remains damp. Once you've got your bedding layer in, it's time to introduce the worms. Hello worms. They're not your average earthworm. Earthworms aerate the soil, compost worms just eat. They pretty much eat anything. They're the goats of the nematode world. Well, are your standard compost worms. Now they're not big, but they eat half their body weight a day. Now, when you look at the size of it, it's pretty small but when you can have 15,000 of those or more in a worm farm, they can really get through your food waste. Now what the worm does is it eats the food by using a spoon-like action. It doesn't have teeth, it has a sort of a crop, so it grinds the food down, sends it through its enormous digestive system, which is basically just one digestive tract, and then out the other end comes the most wonderful garden fertilizer. It's called vermicast, or wormicast, I like to call it. But that is what these babies are gonna do in your garden. And all of this garden will be completely regenerated all the time by those worms doing that marvelous work. Now these worms are absolutely magnificent for composting. They're hungry, they're ready to work, and they will make your garden magic. Let's try, let's add these babies. They're hungry, they're almost nibbling my fingers. Now 
now that your worms are in there, it's just up to you to feed them the right foods. Don't overfeed your worms. Often that's a common problem with worm farms. They get the whole compost bucket just tipped on top of them. Ah, poor little worms. So you've just got to feed them a little bit first, maybe once a week until they get through that food. Uh, they love things the smaller you can chop stuff up, the better. I know a person that actually has a worm blender. That's not for blending the worms, it's actually for blending the food for the worms and then they pour it on like a giant smoothie. They'll get through it, they'll just suck it through their giant intestine straw and eat it quickly. But generally, you don't need to do that. Just sprinkle it on the top, all over the worm farm and they will eat it. And then when most of that's gone, keep on adding stuff. Potato peels, lettuce, bits of chopped up broccoli stalk, whatever you don't eat, these guys generally will. There's a few things they don't like. Dairy products bread, onion and garlic, citrus and meat. It just goes stinky before they can eat it. So if they're not eating the food, take it out, put it in your compost and give them a little bit of a zhuzh. Now they will just happily live in there. The beauty of the in-garden worm farm over the freestanding is that these worms can go all through this garden doing their worm poo, doing their worm wee into the wicking bed below and generally keeping this garden bed absolutely tip top. Now, a couple of things, worms hate the heat. So in the middle of summer, this black box, which I will cover with a lid and some wet hessian or a towel, uh, will get hot, but the worms don't suffer because they can go and find shelter anywhere in this garden bed that's nice and cool. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, if they dry out, that's the other problem for worms. So you've got to make sure that when you're watering your garden bed, this is also moist because worms breathe through their skin. They don't actually breathe through lungs. To breathe, they need to have moisture around them. Not wet, but just moist. And that should be right, and your worms will merrily live forever and keep reproducing, keep giving you great garden soil. And you know what the best thing is? You can give your friends worms for Christmas. Wouldn't that be nice? Who wouldn't want worms for Christmas? What a beautiful gift. Thanks for watching this DIY video. There's heaps more on the website. Stay tuned.